Let's uh, let's see if the starter wants to cooperate with us today, shall we? I think uh, I think I might need a new starter. What do you guys think? Let's see. Let's see how she is. Yeah. Yep. Come on. Oh, he's cold. E85 starts, man. Come on. You got this. You got this. All right. Ugh. You got it. Come on. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to talk to Jack or maybe Brad and just see if there's anything we can do about these uh, super cold like E85 starts because it really doesn't want to start up that well. And then obviously our uh, our start issues need to be addressed as well. But what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a late start for sure. I had to re-upload today's video because I had a little bit of issues with the ending of it. So uh, I thought I had everything all set to go last night, but of course I went ahead and double checked everything to, uh, this morning and it was all it was all wrong. But we're good. Video is up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the whole like build time lapse of the 240. Today, today's plan. Um, I have to kind of see if I have, we have an oil filter relocation kit coming. And um, if it is here, it's it's been a while since since I've ordered it, but if it is here, then uh, we should be going ahead and maybe installing an oil, uh, our, our oil cooler and the oil filter relocation kit today. We'll kind of see how that goes. I do want to go ahead and clean up some of the wiring at the footwell where the ECU is. Um, our clutch, we did actually vacuum bleed our clutch and it, uh, it's much better. Um, I did notice I had like a couple instances, like instances where it kind of dropped, like it, it had the same kind of feeling, but not as harsh, but, um, it, it would happen like once and then it would just kind of be done. So maybe I've seen a vacuum bleed it one more time, but guys, this thing is looking super sweet. I mean, I just love the whole rear end of this car, man. I mean, that whole diffuser custom exhaust that ah oh, that wing and we do have side skirts that I really want to go ahead and get installed but let's go ahead we're gonna head over to my parents place it's a late start guys like I'm saying it's like three o'clock in the afternoon uh, I'm pretty hungry as well but let's go ahead and kind of see what we can get into today shall we we have made it to the crib check it out we got exactly what we need gotta love that that China packaging right <laughs> it's actually what all the guys at HP logic are running so they said it works fine. Another little uh, shout out to one of my Instagram, YouTube followers. Um, his info will be down below. If you guys want to go ahead and check out his page, all his stuff will be in the description. He has a pretty insane RB30 S14. He's shooting for a thousand horsepower, man. Thing is no joke, dude. It's it's a beast. So go ahead and check his info out down below. He sent us this little care package for the Z. So uh, shout out to you, man. I appreciate it. I got to say, man, these fans, well, I, okay, that extra fan that I installed is a game changer, you know what I mean? So it's pretty cool that we're able to just install one more fan and we get that kind of a big difference. Um, it literally, the, the fan cycles so quickly now, it's super nice. Um, one of you guys was mentioning, and I have been thinking about this myself very, very hardcore, and it's just a money thing right now. I'd, I just, I don't want to get like super cheap ones. I kind of want to get carbon fiber ones, but those are also like 300, 400 bucks. Uh, what, what am I talking about? You might be asking. So obviously our under the hood temps are pretty gnarly. Um, I do have, so the cowl here is in two piece. I currently don't have this side installed. Um, I actually have it ready for paint. It just needs to be painted because I actually cut it along this line. Normally it would kind of go all the way through in here as kind of a rain shield, but I cut it along this weather strip. So we would still have a little bit of an air gap for the motor to breathe, but I still don't think that's enough. What I want to do is uh, get some like hood vents on here. And then you know one on this side to match it, obviously. But uh, there is a real, I think it's APR. I think it's APR. They make a, a a really really nice set of hood vents, like a universal set. So, but uh, yeah, as far as the clutch, the clutch is much better. It did kind of drop on me a little bit earlier, so maybe I'll go ahead and rebleed that. I don't know about today, but uh, down the line when I have the car jacked up. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and eat some food really quick, and then we'll be back out here getting some work done. I would also like to mention some of you guys were getting a little upset about uh, my 90 degree oil fitting drain thing. And you know, you want, you're not the first, so don't worry. But guys, it is fine. <laughs> as long as your oil drain isn't pointed upwards, you're fine. Like oil will 
flow itself out naturally. I mean, there's a restrictor. There's, there's not that much oil coming through that line, let alone enough to back up the turbo, I guess I, I'm assuming is what you guys are think is happening. You know what I mean? Like it just, it's, it's fine. It really is fine. If you guys have a better uh, solution, uh, please feel free to come down here. Um, we'll meet up and I can show you guys exactly how this is set up and you'll see that there's clearly no other possible way to route that turbo line unless we, no, there's actually, there's actually no, pos until we get a hard line, there's no fitting, there's no bend or anything that is actually an easier path than what we have now. Trust me, the guys, me and the guys at Helltech spent like a whole day trying to figure out the best solution for this drain. And this is the best solution for the drain. So um, the heat obviously is a problem, but guys, for now, uh, the, the line is super, super dry and we have no more leaks and um, I'm not wor really worried about it because this is not a long-term solution. I also just want to let you guys know really quick, by the way, had a really epic, I guess when you got like a, like a non-pita bread with like some really nice spiced up chicken, uh, like a nice salad on there. Ooh, super good. But uh, <laughs> we come to the Paris place for all the good food, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna go ahead and play clean up. Uh, as you guys can see in here, it is a little bit of a mess. That's why we're gonna work on this because it is kind of bumming me out a little bit. Uh, we're running the factory 2JZ engine harness. So that does create a lot of extra stuff you don't need. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tear all this stuff out, or not out, but apart. So we can go ahead and, and you know, sift through the stuff that we need and the stuff that we no longer need because as you guys can see, this little connector right here is all that we need to run this whole car completely. And all this extra stuff is exactly that. It's just extra stuff. So we're going to go ahead and terminate a lot of this stuff. I'm going to show you guys how I do it. And hopefully it can help some of you guys back at home. So um, let's get started. First thing I definitely recommend you do is disconnect your battery. Okay, yeah, I've been playing some basketball lately. It's been, it's been pretty fun. I got to fold those up too last minute. I know, guys. I know. I'm sorry. But these are, I should be taking care of these because they are factory OEM leather t-top bags, so I don't know why I kind of feel I, I oh, Damn, I'm kind of ashamed of myself that they were just laying like that, but we'll put them out in the sun and they'll be all nice again um, I have one of these I got to actually mount it properly because it's kind of just chilling right now again little things that we have to go ahead and fix on the car But push that button and we no longer have connection to everything So we have our key essential items laid out right in front of us first off Shrink wrap tubing. Um, I used the really small. I'll show you guys why wire strippers. I guess just a blade just in case um some cutters some more cutters lighter for the heat shrink um we also have a beautiful cup of english tea shout out to my english tea drinkers out there you guys know what's up and uh we have our mess of wiring so obviously go ahead get your phone out go ahead and take a couple before and after pictures because you know we're going to be pretty happy about the results so yeah after you got your you know pictures for the before and after for the gram Go up in here and just rip apart as much as you guys can, kind of clean up, I guess separate as many things as possible. Obviously make sure your battery is disconnected. Let's go to town. I'm honestly just, I'm having a tough time figuring out where to start, I guess. To be honest with you. Don't cut any wires, that's that's my top tip for this, for this process. Do not cut any wires. <laughs> Uh, this is kind of intimidating, honestly. There's a lot going on here. You really don't want to mess anything up, you know what I mean? But I guess you can't fix it until we dive in and start tearing things apart, you know? This is kind of one of those, like, you got to take a couple steps back to go forward, but man. <laughs> Right, guys so I kind of got it um, split apart as much as I think I need to um, so you got this plug right here uh, this is definitely came off like it went into the uh, factory 2JZ ECU as you can see obviously it's not connected to anything so it's not really being of any use at all so we're gonna go back we're gonna go too far back we'll just go kind of around into this area at least for this plug so I can show you guys what I'm doing uh, and we're gonna chop one by one I guess since the battery is disconnected, I don't know if it makes too much of a difference if you go ahead and chop them all at once. It's just good practice to go ahead and just chop them one at a time so you don't cut two at the same time and possibly short or ground something out. So the way we're going to go ahead and do it, 
Uh, and I don't, I don't even know why I have these in our mix. So we don't even need those um, for this job, at least not that I think. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just chop, I guess, where you wanna chop them. Um, right there is good. And um, guys, the, the, the super easy part is, you get yourself this really thin, you guys see that? Oh, oh, the really thin kind of heat shrink right there. So uh, what I do is I just chop it up into little pieces. Um, that's kind of like so. Nice little like centimeter bits. And uh, we just go in back to the wire. And instead of using tape or anything wild like that, we just slip like half of the heat shrink on. Sorry, you guys probably can't see too well, but I'll bring you guys in in a second. And then go ahead and heat shrink it on. And there you go. Now it's terminated. It's not going to ground out or short out or anything, even if it could or would, it can't, <laughs> you know? So bring you up for a little close-up shot. As you can see, that's it. Super simple, nice and easy. But now we just have a lot more to go. So you just kind of repeat the same process for every wire that you guys want to go ahead and terminate. And you're, you'll, be, you'll be in good shape. <laughs> Right, guys so it's uh it's been at least at least an hour at least an hour maybe close to two i uh, just got back from home depot i actually went ahead and bought some velcro strips uh why you might ask well check this out so this is our current wiring situation uh really nice man here's our main ecu plug now this whole little side harness here only have a couple wires that are tapped into this um this i believe i believe is for like some dash reader i could be wrong uh, I'm not entirely too sure what's tapped into here. Brad definitely helped out a bunch with the wiring. Um, if I if I knew, I would definitely tell you guys. But this is still going to be part of our harness. I thought about chopping these out, but I really don't want to just because this is like part of the body harness and not the engine harness. So the engine harness side, we just have these Terminator plugs. Um, I figured just to leave those just just in case. Um, our igniter. Uh, here it is as kind of just chilling. We have these wires which we're gonna go ahead and tuck away uh, This is like for my clutch switch for um, Two-step anti-leg that kind of stuff fans um, And something else I forget exactly so that'll tuck up inside here the velcro as you guys can hopefully see I actually mounted up our Haltech uh, wideband controller. I kind of stuck it on there crooked. So Don't judge me. It looks way cleaner as you guys can see uh, instead of it just kind of hanging in no man's land, it now has its own permanent spot. And we're going to do the same with our Elite ECU. So I think it's probably going to get mounted upside down, kind of like that. Uh, because the plug is kind of, it's going to be more so towards the bottom. So we'll have everything all mounted up properly as it should. We got four or five plugs here that uh, we just, you know, yanked right out of there. So it looks way cleaner. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and wrap up the harness in this awesome Tessa tape. I actually have this linked in my Amazon store down below. So if you guys want to go ahead and get anything that you kind of see on the channel, um, there's a good chance you might see it on the Amazon store. And there's some cool stuff on there. Actually, this, sorry, I need to get, if any of you guys have an ashtray, uh, please let me know or whatever you want to call it, like a little, this thing, because <laughs> my hood, the door is actually broken. Um, also, if anyone has one of these pieces because the clip is broken on it would like that um, also starter just while we're on the on the topic uh, if any of you guys have a used 2jz starter vvti i don't know if it makes a difference or not i could use it let me know if you guys want to sell it or whatever um instead of me paying like 200 bucks for a replacement from autozone so i'd rather get oem too you know what i mean so all right i'm gonna get back to it i'm gonna start wrapping I'm gonna start wrapping this stuff back in the nice Tessa tape. It's got like a nice felt look to it. So it's uh, really nice, you know, for interior stuff.
What do you guys think? We're all mounted up, everything kind of in place. Uh, and by the way, it's pretty cool that Nissan kind of offers this wooden piece. I've never had fit so damn well. Hang on, carpet's in the way. This whole like one-handed film thing, it's it's definitely easier said than done at times. I'll, I'll give you that, guys that much. Um, but check this out. I mean, this literally fits like, like factory. I mean, I'm flush up against the actual brace where before I just have, was shoving all my wires back there and just cramming them behind this piece of wood, which every time I did it, I kind of cringed a little bit just because like it's not, you know, it's not how I usually like to work and, and have things set up. One day it'd be cool to go ahead and kind of strip back the whole harness, the whole engine harness and just peel back all of the wires um, that we no longer need. So, but for now, I mean, looking at it guys, way more, way more visually appealing. Still not like as good as I'd want it to be, but I mean, this is again, guys, a factory 2JZ harness. So there's a lot of stuff that's just unnecessary as far as like clutter and wiring and stuff like that. So without going too crazy and too gnarly, um, without chopping and relocating and stuff like that, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Everything's nice and mounted, nothing's going anywhere, and um, yeah, man, I'm happy. Now we just gotta make sure that everything still turns on and works like it should, so. By the way, I, uh, a couple of you guys have asked about the audio video that we did. I never actually released it. Um, it's kind of like, the content, the footage is like, okay, I mean, it was, we were in like my garage at home, so. Uh, it was super cold, super dark, and like not the greatest. However, we do have some good footage. If you guys want to see a video of it, um, I can edit it and put it up for you guys. Uh, just know that if you do see it, if you guys do want me to post it, just know that it was in the past. So if there's things different and there's snow on the ground, <laughs> that's why. But uh, have a really nice setup. It, it bumps, man. It's it's a really good setup. So if you guys want to see, uh, definitely go ahead and let me know. Okay, that's the first start. That's good. Nothing Nothing weird. Look at that. Perfect. The starter was real good on that one. So we got our two bolts holding her in. As you can see, super, super solid. I like how it gives you like a kick panel so you're not just stomping away at your computers and electronics behind here. Well done, Nissan. It is kind of funny that they used wood though. I think that's pretty, pretty funny. Like that's a factory thing. Went ahead and got a little side trim piece back on. Little bolt holds it in right there underneath here as well. Also, uh, kind of a shot in the dark here, but would anyone have this little corner piece right there? They're supposed to have a little cap on it, and I had mine, but now I've lost it ever since I did my TJ swap. And I'm sure it's gonna show up one day, but uh, if anyone has one, feel free to let me know. I would love to, love to snag that from you. Oh, another big thing I'm looking for, guys. The covers for these T-tops. If anyone has them, please let me know. <laughs> But then, come back here guys, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, give this a nice little flip up. It's got some Velcro pads here, because it has Velcro pads up top. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this sucker on, like so. And that's nice and stuck to it. And then we have our floor mats, which I do want to get some new ones, but look how nice the carpet is underneath. I mean, come on. I do have to vacuum. I am going to vacuum this actually today. We are going to start working on getting rid of all this stuff, guys. There is a kit that I want to buy that uh, transforms all this into nice, like, really, really nice suede, like an Alcantara suede. So, also, might want to... Oh, there's, there's stuff I want to do. That, there's so much stuff I want to do this interior, guys. But, you know, like I said, we're just grinding for that paycheck, boys. We're grinding. We'll get there, man. A lot of, lot of things to come for this thing. Can't wait. So could someone please tell me what I could do about this piece? Like mine is so tattered and it kind of makes the whole interior just look really, really bad back here. I gotta get a new one of these. I don't know how this got all scuffed up. I'm pretty upset about that. But yeah, this, I mean, this is just, oh, we don't we don't want this anymore. This is just, it looks real bad. So man, it is freezing right now. It's definitely in the forties for sure, which, you know, doesn't make much sense. Considering it's May. But we're just on our way back home. That's that's all we're doing here. I gotta take you guys for a quick little rip with me. Testing out some camera angle. That's kind of mainly what I'm what I'm trying to get out of this little shot right here. But uh, I 
I live super close and I, I you know it's pretty much you take one road and it's just a big main road to my to my place so not really too many opportunities to get on it too much <laughs> guys well that is going to be it for today's episode hopefully you guys enjoyed it's a little bit dark out but uh, I just wanted to get all our wiring stuff just kind of situated and out the way that way you don't have to worry about it and uh, tomorrow we'll be back up installing some parts on the car and uh, let me know what you guys want to see down below maybe like some launches uh, some rolls some some you know brake boosting I'm always into making that kind of content for you guys I just want to make sure you guys would be into it as well so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing I'll see you guys tomorrow